Thank you, Karen Corla. Um, Minister, uh, Tisha, can I pick up on, on your comment that you know there's unlikely to be progress on comprehensive immigration reform this side of, of the, the U.S. presidential election, particularly in relation to some of the commentary that we see uh, from candidates. Uh, and I think we all want to acknowledge the, the executive action that has been taken by uh, President Obama. Um, but can I ask you, Tishuk, is there a possibility or an indication or an opportunity that some form of immigration, a uh, form of an immigration bill, can be introduced uh, before uh, John Boehner uh, departs as Speaker of the House uh, in the next month? Uh, and have you got any indication in relation to that? I know that uh, Minister Flanagan met with uh, Congressman Simpson Brainer um, during the week, and he intends to bring forward a piece of legislation on E3 visas, uh, which would allow uh, people to live and work in the United States and to, to immigrate from Ireland to the United States and access visas, about 10,000 per annum. Um, can progress be made in relation to that? And the reason that I ask that, Tishuk, is that if we're not going to be able to make progress uh, on a comprehensive solution in the United States, can we look at specific solutions that can address specific problems that the Irish have, like the E3 visa, uh, but in tandem with the E3 visa, to make it a, a success, we need to be able to ensure that young people that are stuck in the United States can come back to Ireland, avail of that E3 visa, and go back into the US again. And can I ask you, Tisha, are you aware of the fact that the Irish Lobby for Immigration Reform are saying that there are about a third of people undocumented in the US at the moment who could avail of existing visas that are available through the Irish Embassy here? However, because of the three and ten year bars that are in place for someone that is a uh, resident of the United States, undocumented, that they cannot come back to Ireland to actually avail of that. Now, uh, seemingly Mexico, Venezuela, the Dominican Republic have been very successful in using that as a mechanism to deal with their uh, undocumented issue. And consistently, and I've received a leaflet here again today, uh, the issue is being raised that the Irish government have not sought of Ambassador O'Malley here in the Phoenix Park that visa. While there has been uh, a request written by the Department of Foreign Affairs, there hasn't been a formal request by you, Taoiseach, or by the Minister for Foreign Affairs uh, to actually formally request uh, the introduction of this executive waiver, which would unlock a problem for about un one third of the undocumented in the United States. Now, Tichuk, I don't know the ins and outs of this, but I would like you to clarify that for me, because this is being circulated widely that you as Taoiseach and your Minister for Foreign Affairs are not prepared to personally seek this executive waiver, and that if you did that, uh, that this would be made available uh, to undocumented Irish in the United States and could allow a significant number of those to come back to Ireland to avail of a visa to go back uh, into the US. Uh, and I think clarity on that issue uh, is needed. And if we could see some progress, even in the current short window that's there uh, by John Boehner, that he could progress an issue, I think every opportunity needs to be taken uh, to see if we can push that along. Well, Deputy Nothing would be aware from his experience of, uh, of how this operates in the States um, in terms of having, um, having two houses that function, both Senate and, 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 and Congress. Uh, and given what's happening there at the moment where there's a, there's a degree of, um, of polarity between the two houses and between the two major parties, I, I just don't see it happening. I might be wrong. I hope I am. I hope I am. Um, President Obama made his decision, executive decision, which is quite limited, blocked in the houses afterwards. Um, I, I, as I say, I met with Speaker Boehner, um, Representative McConnell, Representative Reid, Representative Leahy, Friends of Ireland, and all of that. Made this case very strongly. Some of the politicians would say, "Well, 
we see an opportunity to tag one element of a bill onto another and that it'll go through on the House, but then you, won't, you don't have the votes. Can you get X number of Democrats, X number of Republicans? It hasn't worked with Speaker Boehner in full situ. And I, you know, with, with respect to them all, I, I, I just don't see it moving along now. So, Mr. Flanagan did meet with uh, Representative uh, Jim Sensenbrenner, another attempt to get E3s. I would hope that that might yield some progress. Um, there is the facility that Australia has never used up all its visas, and maybe perhaps that these might be transferable to another country. That might not be possible. It might be taken as a, as a very you know, poor signal from one country that hasn't used up all its visas that were allocated to it. But we, have, uh, we, have, um, uh, we have personnel who, who could do that. But I'll tell you something else, Deputy Nacht. Um, I'm, I'm very concerned now at what's, uh, what's purported to happen in respect of J1 visas. You're aware that uh, we get, obviously, seven, seven and a half thousand of young people who go to America every year on a J1 visa. Uh, and these are extraordinary opportunities for young people to experience American life, the personality of America, uh, to work in America, make new contacts. Obviously, it brought its own tragedy in Berkeley later, earlier this year. But because of a series of issues that have arisen, uh, the authorities that actually issue J-1 visas seem now to be bent on introducing a requirement that there be pre-employment for young people before they would go. The extent of paperwork and administration that may be involved here, I'm unaware of. But if that were to happen, that would lead to two, two things, I think. Either a serious reduction in the number of J-1 visas that would be granted to Ireland, um, perhaps down by as much as 60 or 80 percent, or people who would travel out on holiday visas and then decide to work illegally, which would only cause trouble for themselves and for everybody else afterwards. So here are a number of things that really do require political clarity about what's required. When I met Senator McCain uh, uh, about this matter, he said that, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of those workers who come in from Mexico, that they, they might be better having a short-term working visa because many of them go back home to their families when the crops are, are, are all in and the harvest is gathered, as the song used to say. Um, would he go through? Would he go through? I'm sure my age. Would he go through? Yeah. Uh, in any event, in any event, I, I, I believe that this is going to be really problematic, particularly for a country like Ireland. And given the sort of nature of our traditional connection, where 50, 60 years ago and before when people left, they never came back. It's changed now, but I, I really believe that the J1 system has been so important in keeping that connection in a modern sense alive, where young people who meet in university or all over the country, walked in America for, for the summer, uh, and all of that, that it keeps those connections between our two countries very much alive currently and for the future. But if that's going to be reduced seriously, I, I believe it would cause uh, real problems for relationships in, in the time ahead. So I think, uh, I think Deputy Nocton, everybody in the House here would, would, would have the same view, I think, that we'd like to have a streamlined, effective strategy. But it requires political will, and it requires political, um, uh, political acceptance. And unfortunately, because of the situation that applies between the Congress and the Senate, that's not there at the moment. So while you have some members of Republican Party and some members of Democratic Party are willing to work on these things to get the numbers and to have the facility to tag it on to an existing bill to go through towards the end of the session is what's required. When I was out there last year, the opportunity was being uh, put forward very strongly that the best time to do either an Irish immigration element or to have major, uh, major immigration reform was going to be at the start of the last session from sort of September, October of last year, and that didn't happen. Now things are moving on in the States, obviously, they're, they're away campaigning on the, on the different party credentials for, uh, for candidacy, and I, th I think it's going to be difficult, but I, 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 I'll certainly, um, you know, work with all the members of the House here in working through our ambassador and consulates and constantly contacting the um, personnel there 
both about E3s, about an element of immigration reform in the absence of overall immigration reform, and certainly on a, uh, not to have a situation where you're going to have an abrupt ending uh, to the J1 system as we know it, and where you'd have a, a dramatic introduction of a requirement for pre-employment. I think if, and these are independent authorities that grant these visas, I think if that's, if that's to be being considered by them, and it is, that there should be a transition period uh, during which, uh, you know, young Irish would be able to um, go to many different places in the United States and not just be congregated in one or two locations, um, which, which uh, has its own kind of implications. But I think this is a serious matter, and it's something that I'm quite prepared to talk to the, um, to the ambassador here. I did mention to him before about the, the bar, the three-year bar and the ten-year bar. I'll follow up on the point that you mentioned, Deputy Nathan. Um, but for us, uh, through Minister of Foreign Affairs and so on, and everybody else, keep in contact with the ambassador and consulates and, and American um, political representatives. But uh, unfortunately, I, I feel it deep down that you're not going, to have, not going to have a major piece of immigration reform now. And if the sense and burner thing works, or the efforts being made now by Ambassador Anderson uh, come to fruition to give a, a few extra visas that are in the system but that are not allocated to Ireland, that might be of interest to us as well. Um, then there's the whole question of, um, of uh, visa waivers. Um, on the 24th of February, uh, on instruction from Minister Flanagan, a letter was issued from the Department of Foreign Affairs to a US Ambassador O'Malley on the wider issue of US immigration reform as well as on the question of waivers and this letter inquired whether it would be possible to create a predictable and a positive pattern for waiver approval within existing US regulations. Minister Flanagan subsequently met with the Ambassador and discussed this issue with him on several occasions. Um, I raised this myself uh, during my visit to Washington on St. Patrick's Day. Now, the U.S. Embassy have indicated that the waiver system is applied in strict accordance with U.S. laws and regulations and is operated uniformly worldwide, including here. An application for waiver grounds of inadmissibility, as this is known, is an application for legal entry to the U.S. made by an individual who is otherwise inadmissible on one or more grounds. Such a waiver can be applied for in the case of a three- or ten-year ban having been imposed for overstaying a visa in the U.S. in the first place. Now, the U.S. Embassy has underlined that applications are assessed individually on a case-by-case -case basis, with final decisions on each being a matter for the U.S. authorities in Washington, and that accordingly an applicant would not be able to predict with any degree of certainty as to whether they would be successful or not. While this response is very disappointing, ultimately it is a matter for the U.S. government and the U.S. Embassy to interpret and to implement their own immigration laws.